When it comes to fusion ROM hacks, Pokemon Fusion 3 is one of the best. Featuring mashups of Pokemon from Gens 1 through 8, there's a lot of great sprites to be seen. But can I beat this game with only dark type fusions? Let's find out. Since this game takes place in the Hoenn region, I thought it was pretty fitting to name myself Sydney, the dark type master. On Route 101, we find Professor Birch being chased down by a stun Z and he asks for help. Our starter options are Treelit, the Trico Rowlet fusion, Torkin, the Torchic Fennekin fusion, and Frokip, the Mudkip Froki fusion. Let me know down in the comments what your favorite fusion is throughout this playthrough. Also, be sure to subscribe and smash that like button if you want to see more fusion games on this channel. After picking Frokip, we save the professor and as a reward he lets us keep the lab experiment. I name him Grim, take down Mei and her treelet, and then it's time to set off on our adventure. Before getting too far from home, I'm able to add two more members to the team. Umbral the Pooch Dower and Chaos the Perinx. Finally, Luxray gets the dark type it's always deserved. In Petalburg, we meet up with our dad and he asks us to help the sickly kid catch a Pokemon. Oh, that's a Gibble Mantike fusion. Water Dragon is a great typing. With that out of the way, we can continue through Petalburg Woods and, uh, what's a Shroomish? I only know Foonmish. Team Aqua for some reason is using a fire type, so I take down the confused grunt and make my way to Rustboro City. Before taking on Roxanne, our Purrynx evolves into Perxio at level 15. Now let's see what the rock type gym leader has in store for us. She leads the Tyrant Nidoran Fusion Tyran as I send in Chaos for an Intimidate. After our first bite flinches, Roxanne heals and unfortunately our second triggers her lead's poison point. One more chomp gets the kill and the schoolgirl sends out her ace Spireep. Luckily this thing is part ghost, so three more bites gets Perrynx another KO with a second potion burned by the leader. Last is another Tyrand, and I decide to switch to Grim who stomped as he hits the field. Next turn, our starter outspeeds for a water pulse one-shot, winning us the stone badge. Next on the docket is to save Pico and recover the Devon goods from this Team Aqua grunt. Wait, he also has a Pooch Dower and a Perrynx? Am I a bad guy? Eh, who cares? President Stone makes us his errand boy and as thanks for saving whatever Pico is in this game, Mr. Briny sails us over to Duford. Perfection Kindergarten? No, no, no. You got it all wrong. But don't you worry, old Sydney here will show you what's cool. Now that I have the entire town bathing with their family members, I can deliver my letter to Steven. While making my way through Granite Cave, Frokip hits level 16 and evolves into Frog Stomp. Now that Steven has his mail, it's time to battle Brawly, but he's got one big obstacle, Haolka. After the electric fighting type wipes us out, I replan my strategy and jump back in against the second gym leader. I lead Grim, who's faked out by me and it, before getting a mud shot off as the poison fighting type bulks up. Brawly doesn't heal his lead, so we take it out with Water Pulse, and then his ace hits the field. Expecting an electric move, I swap Chaos in, but the flying mouse bulks up, offsetting my Intimidate and boosting its defense. Realizing that Purrynx can't really hit this thing, I swap to Umbral, but a second bulk up could spell trouble. I cycle another Intimidate, with Chaos taking over half his health from Karate Chop, and Umbral dropping to a crit next turn. Our Electric type brings Haolga back to neutral attack before being done in by another Karate Chop, leaving this all up to Frog Stomp. After a few Mud Slaps to lower accuracy and more bulk ups from our opponent, we confuse with Water Pulse. Next turn, the Luchador hits itself and a crit Water Pulse is enough to take it out before it could even damage Grim. Brawly's last Mon is a Meta Mask, which only hits a Nightshade before being killed by two Water Pulses. And with that, badge number two is in our hands. We hitch another ride with Briny over to Slateport, where Team Aqua is once again up to no good. After bodying some grunts, we're introduced to Archie, the leader of the Water Cult. Now that Captain Stern has the Devon parts, we can head for Mauville. On Route 110, we run into our next team member, Shady the Talaby. Well, it's time for everyone's favorite fight. Welcome to the Salty Spittoon. How tough are you? May's lead, Talaby, goes down to a pair of water pulses after double teaming, bringing out her starter, who's evolved into Grotix. I swap to Umbral, who eats and absorb, then she's brought to 25 HP with wing attack, and after an ember, May swaps to a Hong Kong to eat our next. Our Pooch Dower is outsped and KO'd by Rock Tomb before she can bite the Ghost Fire type, so I bring Grim back in to deal with it. After a Water Pulse gets the knockout, it's back to Grotix. This time I switch Shady into the Absorb, and after living through two wing attacks, we win the battle with one of our own, followed by an Aerial Ace. 
before setting foot in the third gym, I go west to Route 117 where our fifth teammate is waiting for us, Scrutump. The Phantump Scrafty Fusion completes our Firewater Grass Core and while grinding, Umbral evolved into Might Doom, but I didn't realize I had stopped recording. Anyway, it's finally time for our face off with Watson. He leads Mudzel, who's outsped by Grim for a Water Pulse one shot. Next is a Plusle Electrode Fusion, which I think is super cool. I switch Shady in against the Ion, who's greeted by an explosion. Now it's back to Grim to take on the Electric Poison Skullferos. Frog Stomp survives a shockwave, and after a mud shot, Watson is forced to heal. This time, our mud shot gets a critical hit, and being four times effective on the Scolipede Ampharos fusion, that's a guaranteed kill. Last is the Dragon Electric Dram Pound. Our starter is outsped and dropped by shockwave, and now I bring in Wicked. A crit Dragon Breath leaves Scrutump with only 2 HP and paralyzed, but he breaks through to land a Confuse Ray. Our baby tree is able to work the dragon down to a heal before it finally gets KO'd, and now the leader is out of super potions. I bring in Chaos who fakes out, but then on his first bite he gets paralyzed by Drampound Static. A pair of Dragon Breaths drops our electric boy, but now we're just one hit from a win. That means I can go to Umbral who takes 50% from Shockwave, and she can wrap things up with a Silk Scarf boosted headbutt. That's the Dynamo Badge. From here we pass through Fiery Path and on Route 112 finally fill out our team with this awesome Rock Rough Carvana fusion, Rockvana. Then Archie scares some magma grunts out of Meteor Falls and we chase them down to Mount Chimney for a showdown with their leader Maxi. The Landlover leads Might Doom who outspeeds Frog Stomp for a bite then takes half its health from Water Pulse. The Mighty Anna Houndoom fusion flinches us with its next bite but then hits itself and Grim puts it out of its misery. Against Tailaby, I decide to give our newest member a chance, and man, I love that back sprite. Eclipse is barely hurt by an aerial ace from the bird, and then fires back with a crit rock tomb to kill. Last is Maxi's ace, Castle, the fire bug type. Since we're four times effective, I keep Rock Vanna in and easily finish this battle with one more rock tomb. With Team Magma gone, our journey down the mountain leads us to Lava Ridge Town, where we get an egg from this old woman. After getting in some sprints, we hatch ourselves a beautiful Ryarua, which I'm so excited to add to the team. I get him up to snuff, and then before taking on Flannery, we have a lot of evolutions. First, Purinx evolves into Luxpard, which is another unreal sprite. Then, Tailaby evolves into Sweebuzz, and Rockvana into Lycorpedo. Interesting thing about this Pokemon, it actually has two forms, and the one you get depends on whether it has a higher attack or defense stat. The midday form that we have here is because Eclipse had a higher attack. Last but not least, Ryorua evolves into Luka Rourke. Let's see if the fire type leader can stand up to our powerhouses. Like Arpedo is able to sweep Flannery's entire team with rock slides. The only Pokemon that wasn't one shot was Excaheat, but thanks to our rough skin, it took itself out after being left with 1 HP. Now that we've embarrassed one gym leader, let's do the same to our dad. He leads. Jesus Christ, that's Jason Bourne. After Depth's double kick does over half, Quagrel crits a mud shot and lowers our speed. We're still fast enough for a swift kick to kill next turn as Norman sends out a Lickoach. Double kick claims another victim and next Furrote defense curls to only take half from our feet of fury. Then the Furrit Go Goat fusion crits a slam to take our lead down. Umbral's Ember is just shy of the knockout and after a few hyper potions we get the grass type to 50% with a burn before our dad switches it out for his ace Lickitash. I let Might Doom go down to a magnitude in order to get a free swap into Chaos who's able to fake out this abomination turn 1. Then a critical hit spark finishes the fat fish leaving Norman with only the ailing Furrote. One bite plus burn damage later and we've got ourselves the balance badge. In the Weather Institute, Scratump finally joins the evolution party as he becomes Scravenant. Two Needle Arms take care of Shelly's Lycar and Lycanpedo, and with the Institute saved, we set our sights toward Fortree City. But since something's blocking our path to the gym, I meet up with Steven to grab the Devon Scope. Oh, I really don't like this thing. Thanks, Depth. Time to see what Winona's got. Her lead, Ponidi, is super cute and gets a bit of damage with Ember since we miss our first rock slide. Once the little horse gets buried, the flying type leader sends in Marilotto and we miss again. Bubble Beam does less damage than I thought it would, but the evolved form Azugiot outspeeds and her Bubble Beam is much stronger. With Eclipse down, I bring in Chaos whose fake out spark combo is more than enough to KO Winona's ace after taking around 50% from Double Edge. The Dragon Water Lapple is next, but Luxpard's first bite gets a flinch. 
Even with two Hyper Potion uses, Chaos gets the kill by putting on an incredible display of flinching on 5 out of 6 bites. Last is Unphalux, who actually lives a spark with around 30% and drops our Thundercat with Ice Beam. No worries though, as Umbral is able to fire off an Ember to drop the Ice Cream Pheasant, getting us yet another Gym Badge. After a quick stop at Mount Pyre, we open the Secret Passage, revealing the Magma Hideout. Maxi shows Groudon the Blue Orb, but the Continent Pokemon looks a little different. That's because it's actually fused with Palkia. Either way, the Legendary runs off and we hightail it to Lily Cove for our last battle with May. She leads the other Laprin evolution, Lapleton, as I send out Sweebuzz. After fighting through Leech Seed, Confuse Ray, Protect Stall, Shady is able to drop the Apple Tart and Azugiot hits the field. I swap Chaos in to eat Wing Attack and pick up a KO next turn with Thunderbolt. Then her Honkol goes down to a pair of bites and we finally get to see her starter's final form, Desitile. Similar to Rock Vanna, the starters in this game have two forms and the one you end up with depends on whether your attack or defense is higher. May's Desitile is Grass Ghost, and here's what the Grass Flying one looks like. With that taken care of, we fly over to Slateport, but are just too late to stop Archie from stealing Captain Stern's submarine. You know, Emerald really goes through a lot of trouble just for you to miss the sub twice. At least now, we finally evolve Frog Stomp into Swap Ninja, whose gender changed for some reason. Since Grim has a bold nature, I didn't need to worry about getting the Dark-type evolution with the other being Water Ground. Now that we can surf to Eastern Hoenn, we gain access to Shoal Cave, where another dark type awaits us, Pacho, the Pancham Cub Chew Fusion. I name her Vortex and immediately grind her up until she evolves into Bear Goro. Time to take on Tate and Liza. The telepathic twins lead Zavile and Lunasir against Grim and Eclipse. The Zatu Weavile Fusion starts things off with a big ice beam that ends up freezing Lycorpedo. Then it also avoids our Muddy Water, which does half of the Pinsir Lunatone Fusion's health as it misses Megahorn. Now I swap Umbral in for Eclipse, who eats Aurora Beam, and then Muddy Water does some chip to the bird and takes out the rock. Thanks to an accuracy drop, Zavile misses Nightshade and is smoked by Might Doom's Flamethrower. As the twins' last Pokemon, Shandagross, comes in, we crit a Muddy Water, leaving it in the red and do around 30% to Soul Cross, who knocks Umbral out with Brick Break. I bring in Chaos to fake the Fighting Rock out, and after Meta Ghost gets a heal, our Muddy Water does 50% and leaves Soul Cross with 1 HP. The Heracross Soul Rock Fusion gets another heal next turn as Luxpard's Crunch finishes Shandagross. One more heal comes out, and then we have no problem finishing things with one last Muddy Water from Grimm. Seven badges down. Team Magma is causing problems at the Moss Deep Space Station, but the only new mons we see here are Maxi's Gangosel and Steven's Rapanite. Once the cult leader realizes his dream of expanding the landmass is dumb, we give chase to Archie at the Seafloor Cavern. We make it to Kyalga before him, but of course the pirate challenges us to a battle. After dropping his Might Doom, we're faced with a new fusion, Walkader. I fire off a superpower with depth, but it comes up just short of the kill. We hang on through Karate Chop with 4 HP, and not expecting Archie to heal, I went for extreme speed. Then we fail to finish the Walrus again as it takes our Lucarork out with another Karate Chop. Chaos comes in and can fake out for an uncontested knockout. Then it just takes two Thunderbolts to KO Lycanpedo Midnight, giving us the win over the second boss. Archie then tries to control the Legendary Fusion, of course using the wrong orb, and throws the planet into turmoil. Naturally, it rests on our tiny shoulders to save the day, so we make our way to Sutopolis City where the Behemoths are facing off. In order to stop them, we need to head to the Sky Pillar where our last team member awaits us, Larva Star. After snagging the soon-to-be Dark-type, we awaken Raytina and send it off to quell the other legends. Before taking on Juan, our newest fusion evolves into Pupa Star, who we shove in the box for now. Time for badge number 8. Gibtyke is first, who swiftly drops to a fake-out T-Bolt combo from our big cat. Next is Lickitcash, who's taken down by some Thunderbolts after hitting an Earthquake and being healed. Kingster, while very cool, can't stand up to our lightning, but Juan has the ground-type swap ninja, so after misclicking Thunderbolt again, we're hit by Muddy Water. From here, I swap to Wicked, who eats two takedowns and destroys our starter's doppelganger with a critical hit four times effective Giga Drain. Last is the Ace King Algae, and since I accidentally gave Lux Part an extra rare candy, I decided to leave Wicked one level lower. I bring Grim into a Sludge Bomb from the Poison type and watch as a non-stab Mud Shot does minimal damage. At least we get two speed drops before a second swap ninja dies on this battlefield. 
I decide it's time for Vortex's debut, but her crunch comes up just shy of the kill, and after another poisonous blast, the leader uses a hyper potion. Bear Goro is able to hang on through another sludge bomb plus poison damage in order to pick up the win with crunches. With the rain badge in hand, we're cleared to take on Victory Road where our final showdown with Wally is about to take place. The sickly kid from Petalburg leads a Karanair against our Lycorpedo. Since this thing is Dragon Bug type, it drops to a single rock slide and then another really cool fusion Galvern comes in. We're Thunder Waved and Signal Beamed, but since this thing retained Norvern's Flying type instead of Dragon, it just takes a single rock slide to kill. With the Grass type Furrowed hitting the field, I decide to swap Umbral into a Leaf Blade. Then after Flamethrower leaves the Goat Ferret on 1 HP, it knocks itself out with Double Edge Recoil. Shockingly, Wally actually has the last starter, Delzakin, and this one is a Fighting type as opposed to the Psychic one. I accidentally Flamethrower again as the Blaziken Delphox Fusion bulks up. Then thanks to its speed boost ability, it takes Might Doom out the following turn with Slash. Fortunately for us, Grim is defensive, so after the plus one Slash does about 50 damage, our Swap Ninja proves it's the best starter with a Surf KO. Last is Rosewile, so I get my Water type out of there as Vortex takes the Giga Drain. Next turn, we 5 spot an Arm Thrust, but then we're toxic I decide to switch to Depth for Stab Fighting, but the Mawile Rose Raid Fusion goes for Iron Defense. Superpower is still strong enough to break through that steel wall, and that's it for Wally. I wonder what happened to his Gibtyke. I was looking forward to seeing its final evolution. With our last obstacle out of the way, we can finally take on the Elite Four. Here's the team I decided to bring, and at level 52, we can face off against... Sydney? He leads Might Doom, who's outsped in one shot by Grim's Surf. Next is Scravenant, so I switch negative into a Giga Drain. Then we Signal Beam, but come up just short of a knockout, and the Grass-type Leech Seeds us. I crunch on the heel for some chip, but Leech Seed gets the tree back to full health, so I decide to Screech before going down. Thanks to the defense drop, Depth is able to double kick for a kill as Sydney brings in Sweebuzz. I pivot to Eclipse, who eats Air Cutter, and then we're outsped and hit with Bone Rush before getting a Rock Slide off. The bird survives, but we hang on through a 3-hit Bone Rush to pick up the KO with Slash. Now the Dark Master's ace comes in, Luka Rourke, who e-speeds to knock out our Lycorpedo. I bring Chaos in for an Intimidate and fake out the powerful fusion, but its inner focus allows it to fire off a superpower for a one-shot. As Wicked comes in, the opponent swords dances and Brick Break just isn't strong enough to kill. After a full restore, Brick Break does a round half, but next turn superpower takes out another of my mons. Although he's underleveled, Depth is able to come in and crit a double kick to knock out his brother, bringing out Sydney's last Pokemon, Lycanpedo. As a dual rock type, Luka Rourke is able to take the final Mon down with a 4 times effective double kick, proving once and for all that we're the real Sydney. After raising everyone's level by 1, it's time to take on Phoebe and her ghosts. First is a Kratatomb as I lead Luxpard for an Intimidate. Our Leopard crunches for about 80% and gets the Spadef drop as the Craterly Fusion stockpiles. Thanks to the drop, our next crunch is strong enough to kill after a full restore, and Phoebe sends in Champ. The Ghost Fighting type takes T-Bolt really well and connects High Jump Kick for a one-shot. I decide to bring Grim in now and use my strongest move, Hydro Pump, which thankfully gets the job done. Next up is Kurgrowth, which hangs on through Crunch, and this Spadef drop is countered by an Amnesia. Since the Ghost Master doesn't heal, Grim is easily able to crunch one more time for a knockout, bringing in one of my favorite fusions in this game, Dragacity. Our bulky gal easily hangs on through two outrages to drop the electric ghost with a pair of her dark fangs. Last up is Driftlord, who lives through crunch and sets up amnesia. As Phoebe heals her blimp, we get a spadef drop, giving us just enough power to take the Wailord Drift Blimp fusion down next turn and snag a win. At level 54, we enter Glacia's room, who leads Aura Queen as I send out Depth. Turn 1, we Swords Dance as the Ice Poison type sets up Light Screen. After buffing ourselves to plus 4, Ice Beam does over half our health, and next turn, I decide to go on the offensive. Surprisingly, Double Kick isn't strong enough to kill, so Luka Rourke is the first one down via a second Ice Beam. I go to Negative here, who Earthquakes for good damage as the Queen is healed. After tanking an Ice Beam on the following turn, one more EQ picks up the knockout. Now Glacio reveals her own Bear Goro, so we Signal Beam for just over half its health as Pupa Star is dropped by Blizzard. Lycorpedo is able to avenge his teammate with a Rock Slide, but Walkadur only takes about 25% from the same and crits a Blizzard to decimate our wolf. 
Chaos comes in for an Intimidate, and after Fake Out, he Thunderbolts for solid damage. The buff Walrus rests in response, but before it can wake up, three more zaps finish it off. Abominine is the next fusion, and I gotta say, I'm a fan. Chaos is able to fire off two more T-Bolts before being dropped by an Ice Beam followed by a Flamethrower, but this allows me to get Grim in for free. Despite a full restore, Swap Ninja crits her Surf, leaving the Ice Master with only a Hack Slash. We Surf, Mudshot, and Crunch the Dragon Ice type who edges us out with three Outrages for a kill. Now it's all up to Wicked, but with Glacia out of heals, we're able to outspeed and connect Brick Break to claim victory number three. I realized here that the Elite Four's aces weren't getting stronger, so I stayed at level 54 and jumped into battle against Drake. His lead is Tyran King, so I immediately switch Eclipse into Krim to tank Earthquake. Swap Ninja is able to surf twice before the Tyrantrum Needle King fusion could do her in. Drake's next mon is Drampound, who's crit by our first Mudshot, and after missing Thunder, our next leaves it in the red. Unfortunately, this time the Hound connects, and that's the end of Grim. As a full restore is used, Negative Earthquakes the Drampa Boltown fusion back to the red, and as we're about to knock it out, we see a swap to Lapple. Pupistar is still able to do some chip with a signal beam before he's taken out by a Hydro Pump Outrage combo. I go back to Lycorpedo now, who outspeeds for a Rock Slide flinch, allowing us to get the kill next turn with another. The Dragon Master's Ace Escanite is next, whose bug typing is now steel, so Rock Slide barely scratches the dragon as it Megahorns Eclipse for a one shot. If Rock can't kill, then Fighting can, as I have Depth Superpower the dragon back into its ball. Goodragon is next, and I forgot that this thing was Ghost type as I try to extreme speed it. I decide to go to Wicked who dodges Scary Face on the switch, but next turn is paralyzed by Body Slam. Scravenant is still able to get a crunch off, and then after two more Body Slams with a full para, we connect another Chomp for the KO. Now it's back to Drampound, who's hanging on by a thread, but Drake sprays another full restore as our Giga Drain does abysmal damage. The Dog Dragon charges, so we get a little more chip with Brick Break before a Thunder takes us out. From here, I'm able to go to Chaos, who crits a fake out, and then, despite being paralyzed by Thunder, is able to connect Crunch to finish the battle and beat the Elite Four. All that's left now is to take on the champion of the region, Wallace. But first, I raise my Pokemon to level 55, where Pupistar finally evolves into the highly anticipated Volcanitar. I decide to lead our newest member against Wallace's Kingster, but immediately decide to swap to Wicked as the Crab fails to protect. This turn it gets one off, and then we Giga Drain for good damage as the Blue Crab misses Guillotine. Now a full restore comes out as we crunch, and because of another Protect, when we finally finish Kingster, our Scravenant is out of PP on its only Grass-type move. With the Poison-type King Algae next, I go back to Negative, who takes Sludge Bomb pretty well. Earthquake leaves the King of the Sea in the red as we tank a Hydro Pump, but thanks to the Sand Stream, we pick up the Knockout. Now the champ sends out his Ace, Gartine. Maybe he traded with Wally. Anyway, our Crunch does surprisingly low damage as Volcanitar is taken down by Hydro Pump. I go to Chaos now, but we bring the Water Dragon into healing range, so when it eventually takes us out with Outrage, it's still at around 30%. Luckily, Grim always gets the job done as her Crunch is strong enough to take out the Garchomp Mantine fusion, bringing in Sarapex. I swap Wicked into a Giga Drain, then trade Crunches with Hydro Pumps until Poison Point and Sand Damage do us in. Predictably another full restore, I Swords Dance with Depth, then Super Power, but it isn't enough as the bulky Fusion Hydro Pumps and again Sand Damage takes us out. Volcanitar seems to be hurting the team more than helping. It's back to Grim for me, whose all reliable Crunch picks up another knockout. Baskukingu is next up, who's very bulky as Crunch does around 30%. With Rain replacing the Sand, Grim feels herself getting more powerful and crits her next deadly bite, leaving Wallace with only a lick of cash, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Crunch Spam is able to finish the champ's last Pokemon before it can drop our starter, and with that, we've beaten Pokemon Fusion 3 with only Dark types. The sprites in this game are some of the best I've seen, and you can really tell the creators put a lot of work into making each and every one of them. I ended up really loving my final team and thought these fusions were all pretty top tier. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more fusion content on this channel, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.